In fact, I think I'd actually go as far as to say that this is probably my favorite sports nutrition product. It's really good. So what's up nutrition nerds and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to go through a review of Science and Sports new beta fuel range. I've already done a couple of videos where I covered why Science and Sport came out with this new range, essentially the science behind it, and my review of the standard gel, because there are two different gels in the range. As far as the science side of things goes, Science and Sport created this new range with a maltodextrin to fructose ratio of 1 to 0.8 because it was shown to be superior for performance compared to the classic 2 to 1 formula in a study from 2013. The 2 to 1 ratio is used for most sports nutrition products and the only other company that I know of that uses a 1 to 0.8 ratio is Martin, who have a pretty great reputation and sponsor triathletes like Jan Fredin and Christian Blumenfeld. My personal opinion is that it might well be a superior formula, but given there haven't been any new updates since 2013, it's hard to say for definite. Whatever the case, I think these products are an excellent choice in terms of pure carbohydrate content and formula. But, well, there's more to it than that, and I want to go through the whole range, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because there is a big ugly. By the way, I'm not sponsored or affiliated with SIS in any way, and I bought the products with my own money so I could create as unbiased a review as possible. So first up, let's talk about the gels. There are two forms of the gels. There's the regular beta fuel gel, which just contains carbohydrates, and then there are these fancy beta fuel gels, which contain carbohydrates and nootropics. Ooh, so fancy. Nootropics are a class of drugs which positively affect brain performance, essentially cognitive enhancers or smart drugs. To cover off the regular gels first, I'll summarize my thoughts from the previous video. Number one, they provide a good amount of carbohydrates in a single gel. That's great because it means you have to use them less frequently. Number two, they taste good and I'm happy to use them multiple times, although they are quite a strong flavor, so some people might like a more neutral taste. Number three, they are an absolute bugger to open. They've gone for upmarket packaging and it's Oh, so luxurious, which is great, unless you're trying to open them whilst, I don't know, doing something like a race. But you can easily get around this issue by giving them a little snip at the top with some scissors on the morning of your race to make them easier to get into. Number four, they are reasonably expensive for what they are, so I think they are best for specific race nutrition prep and race nutrition rather than during regular training. So with that out of the way, onto the fancy gel with the nootropics. It contains the same amount of carbohydrates, but it also contains 250 milligrams of citicoline, one gram of taurine, 200 milligrams of theanine, and 200 milligrams of caffeine. Now this is actually a super interesting gel and concoction of ingredients. The aim of it is to give you a performance boost both mentally and physically when you're getting into the latter parts of your race. The combination of these ingredients should reduce the perception of pain and fatigue and increase your alertness, which sounds awesome. Now, caffeine has a tried and tested evidence base and it's absolutely a great tool for triathletes to use. 200 milligrams is a good dose and falls within the guidance, so I think this is absolutely spot on. But when it comes to the other ingredients, from what I can find, there's either limited or not much evidence for them when it comes to endurance events. Individually, they seem to have positive effects on things like reaction time, and coordination and memory and such like, and, and specifically taurine does seem to be useful for endurance performance. So the question here is, does the combination of ingredients help when it comes to performance in, for example, a marathon or an Ironman? And the answer is, truthfully, I don't know. I looked on the Science and Sport website for any evidence they used for this product, but could only find evidence for their carbohydrate formula, which makes it a little difficult. Now, how did I feel when I used it? Well, like I had a carb gel with caffeine. I think this is difficult to say that this product is beneficial for endurance athletes as a combination, because as far as I can tell, there isn't heaps of evidence for it as a group of ingredients or for two of them specifically in relation to endurance performance. However, 
there isn't necessarily anything to say it's bad either, and absence of evidence doesn't mean evidence of absence. And as caffeine is definitely beneficial for endurance events, and taurine probably too, it does seem like this gel would probably be a positive supplement to use during endurance events, but I'm just not sure if the addition of citicoline and theanine make this any better than a different caffeine containing carb gel. It does taste nice though. But anyway, overall, this is probably a useful product because it does contain a good kick of caffeine, so could easily factor into a nutrition plan for something like an Ironman event. So on to the next product, which is this, the Beta Fuel Chews. I'll be honest, this one surprised me. I think the aim of it is to be part of a nutrition plan in a long distance endurance event as a bit of a shake up to give a break from the taste and texture fatigue of gels and drinks without compromising on performance. Solid foods are known to cause a higher incidence rate of gastrointestinal symptoms during exercise, so in general they aren't ideal during endurance events, but sometimes there's only so many gels or liquid carb drinks that you can consume. One of these provides 45 grams of carbohydrates, which is a decent amount. They're slightly jelly-like in their structure, but a bit firmer than jelly, and they're quite grainy in their texture. But despite being full of carbohydrates, they aren't overly sticky on your hands when you eat them, and they don't leave that clagginess in your mouth either, like you get with most gels. And I found them easy to eat, even whilst working hard. I actually really enjoyed the taste and texture of these chews. For me, they cover everything you need as far as a carby sports nutrition product for racing, and I could definitely see them fitting into an Ironman nutrition plan. It feels to me like a well-refined product by Science and Sport. In fact, I think I'd actually go as far as to say that this is probably my favourite sports nutrition product. It's really good. Now, before we move on to the last of these products, let's quickly run through some info on the whole Beta Fuel range. The whole range, and actually all of Science and Sport's products, are batch tested under the Informed Sports program. In my opinion, this is fantastic because it means there's a lower likelihood of using a product which contains banned substances, so you can have a lot more reassurance that you're using something which isn't going to get you banned from the sports you love. Each of their Beta Fuel range costs between £1.80 and £2.20, per single product. Compared to Martin products, which use the same formula that I mentioned, these are significantly cheaper, as the Martin products cost somewhere in the realms of £3 per product. Obviously this depends on things like sales, whether you're bulk buying and such like, but it just gives you an idea. They are about the same sort of price as precision fuel products, and cheaper than never second, and so I think in terms of value, they're actually pretty great. However, they are still reasonably expensive compared to other products out there, and I don't think they need to be an everyday training product, but more specific to race nutrition prep and race nutrition. This Beta Fuel range has a good mix of different products, and we're about to go through the last, but they give you a lot of versatility. So if you wanted to just stick with one brand, then I think there's some good options here. So now onto the last product of the Beta Fuel range, and it's this, the Beta Fuel 80 powder. You mix this with water to get a drink that provides you with a great source of carbs whilst training or racing. And this is an interesting product because of the salt content in it, which we're going to cover in a moment. But first, let's talk about the aim of this product. Now, I may be stating the obvious here, but it provides as the name suggests, 80 grams of carbohydrates in 500 milliliters of water. That's a good whack of carbs and would easily get you in the optimum grams of carbs per hour if you consumed just one of these. They taste pretty good and actually better than expected. The smell is very sweet, but the taste isn't quite as strong and I'm glad about that. It's easily mixable and I don't have any qualms about any of that. You could use it on its own or in combination with the other SIS products as part of a race nutrition plan, and it would be great. Except there's one big issue for me. The salt content of this is essentially zero. Nada, nil, nothing. Which means from a hydration point of view, it's not that helpful. You're essentially consuming 500 milliliters of plain water whilst probably working hard. 
So you'll be sweating and as you might know if you've listened to my stuff before, that's a big no. During long distance events, you should always consume fluid with sodium in to make sure that you're replacing the sodium that you lose whilst sweating and to ensure you're not just diluting the sodium that's in your blood. And honestly, I'm really confused by this. Now, there are different thoughts on hydration and we aren't going to get too deep into it here, except to say that currently evidence still suggests that you should drink salty fluids during an endurance race. The fact that science in sports produced a non-salty drink as part of their performance range is a bit odd. I did get in touch with them about this and was told that you could add table salt to the mixture or consider adding something like SIS's hydro tablets or take a salt capsule alongside it, but they couldn't confirm that this wouldn't change the mixture and absorption of the beta 80 drink. So I find this quite difficult. You have a potentially great product that is then let down because of actually not really being fit for purpose unless you add in additional products yourself, but they can't confirm the original product will work as intended. Now, although this does irritate me and I find it a bit weird, I don't think that it means that you shouldn't use it or that all is lost. As with almost any nutrition product or plan, the individual response can vary and there has to be a trial and error element to see what you can tolerate well. And some people like to completely separate their hydration and their carb intake, so potentially this is science and sport trying to go down that path. Or they have access to some unpublished research with their athletes and have realized that this is the best option. Whatever it is, I couldn't find anything on the SIS webpage related to this. But I think it would still be reasonable to use this beta 80 drink and either experiment with adding your own salt, the hydro tablets or capsules. Uh, I guess I'm just a bit sad as I feel it's so close to being the complete package of products that it's a bit of a shame this final one doesn't just tie it all in together. But never mind. I still think that this is a great range overall and one that I'm sure I will use at various points. Now, if you're interested in other sports nutrition products, I've put a video next to me here that I did on the Martin products and their entire range, and I break them down like I did in this video and give you my thoughts on it. If you did find this video useful, then I would really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up, press subscribe if you haven't already, and the notification icon to stay up to date with all of my content. Otherwise, have fun with your training and your racing, and I'll catch you next time.